name's Matt from Discovering His Way. I'm doing a complete comparison on the Husqvarna 128 LD versus the Still 91R. The Husqvarna is a two-stroke. The Still is a four-stroke. Roughly about the same weight, but there are vast differences between these two units. This unit is 239. This unit is 329. The Still $70 more. Husqvarna has a half inch larger cutting swath, which is 17 inches compared to the still 91R, which is 16.5 inches. So these have a 28 cc engine. So let's get a close up, see the differences, and then I'll put them to work. And I'll tell you a story how I got my hands on the Husqvarna. Let's go over some differences. This is made in China. This is made in America. This is cheap plastic. Uh, this has melted. I've seen guys out there in the field, they've actually overheated this unit and melted this, which I think is crazy because something broke internally ahead and it moved everything to one side and it basically caught on fire. This Stills casing is made out of ballistic polymer. Now guys, now when you're looking at your primer pump, let me pull this one up so you can see it. The Husqvarna is way in here, not a bad deal, but just pushing it, I can tell a vast difference, difference between the material that is used between the still and the Husqvarna. The Husqvarna is very, very hard. It's a harder plastic. And what that means is when you put any kind of ethanol through this unit over any length of time, whether you mean to or not, it's going to eventually dry rot. This is the case. More people after two years, they say, hey, Hey, I had to replace my primer pump, no big deal. Yet the still uses a different type of rubber that lasts four times as long as their competitor's primer pump. And you're just like, well, that's not really a big deal. Well, it isn't a big deal until you go and push on it and it cracks because you bought the Husqvarna. Now guys, let's look at the gas tanks. Do you see the difference in color? There's a distinct difference. This you can see through, but it's really more of an opaque white. It's a beautiful color. And I've had uh, some of these stills for five and six, eight years, and it always stays this color. Yet, see this? This is all stained. Why? This is cheap plastic. This only holds 13.5 ounces where the still tank holds 24 ounces. Huge deal. As far as the handles go, I I'm not going to mince words. This isn't a bad handle on the Husqvarna. It's just that the still is much, much nicer, better. It feels better in your hand. The steel has a solid shaft that is lined, meaning it has noise dampeners and it has something that's protecting that steel rod again steel rod that's going all the way down the length of the shaft here you don't have that you just have something that's inside here basically banging around yes they have some kind of insulation but it's nothing equivalent to the steel so much so again the Husqvarna gets two years warranty and the steel gets four years when we're looking at the handle friends let me just tell you about the handles still wins hands down this is just plastic um, it, 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 look at this with the with the nut coming through it this is just really nice in your hand it's rubberized uh, both of these can take attachments with the Husqvarna you attach it halfway down on the still on this unit you're going to go ahead and take off the gear head and you're going to be able to switch that out both of these units have a spring assist starter, meaning when you go to pull the string, you're gonna you're you're hitting a spring. Both of them have that. And again, the difference between the four-stroke and the two-stroke, day and night difference. I took this unit out into grass not much taller than what we're sitting in right now, and I blew out the head where the four stroke can handle any amount of grass. It doesn't matter how thick it is because it's the four stroke, it's more torqued. And so even though you have the same size CC engine and both of them take that oil to gas ratio, this has so much more power. Both of these oh. trimmers have a tap and go trimmer head, which makes it easy so you're not having to adjust it. It's not that single line crap that you're having to take off the head. So I do give it to Husqvarna for upping their game a little bit and putting a tap and go on it. Both of the handles can be adjusted and again still wins bar none because of the thickness. 
the covering on it and it's not just cheap plastic uh i feel they cut corners i mean of all the things that's the thing that you're holding on to the most this still has the state-of-the-art anti-vibration system. Nothing in the industry is equal to it. The Husqvarna has not done so well. More times than not, when I'm looking at reviews, they've done some kind of mechanism in here, and what ends up happening is this piece completely breaks off. I mean, literally, this piece is just hanging down because they dropped it, they hit something, and so their anti-vibration system is not equal or on par with stills. Both of your units are going to have that safety mechanism that you're going to have to have your palm here before the trigger will engage. I like that. Still over here has a button that you push to stop it. Here, you just hit the button one time. Not a big deal. But again, these are the little extras that over time make a huge difference. Both of the air filters on both these units are very accessible very easy and actually Husqvarna has done something very nice I'm going to give it to them they have this round screw thing that you just screw out and it pops off where I have to use on the still a screwdriver that is provided let's talk about the gear heads on these guys uh stills gear heads it is just almost literally impossible to destroy it because they have a clutch on clutch system. It's metal on metal clutch. What that means is when you uh, lock up, when you seize the head between rocks, uh, between a branch, I, I don't know, whatever you do, when you do what you do, okay? It's not going to just snap. It's not going to break those gears off. And yet Husqvarna does not, again, have that technology. And if you will look through YouTube, you will see lots of people who have burned out their gear head. And what's funny about this is it reminds me, the Husqvarna, it reminds me of a Mr. Potato Head. And you're like, well, what are you talking about, Matt? I mean, all of the parts are, are so readily available. And, and the reason that is, is it's always breaking down. And, and you might have one, you're like, well, Matt, mine hasn't broken down. Well, good luck. I mean, you're the winner, but here's the thing. Why would I wanna go with this if I could spend $60 more and go with this, get a four-year warranty, get a solid shaft drive, get the state-of-the-art anti-vibration system, have more torque, more power, guaranteed success from the number one manufacturer of weed eaters across the world. This was made in China, this is made in America, this is high composite ballistic plastic. This is just garbage plastic. This is, look at right here, rusting, where steel uses bolts that don't rust. These are just the little extras. This is rusting, this is rusting, okay? Over here in the center, it's rusting. Rust, rust, rust. Well, I don't want my weed eater to rust. Look at this, this is all faded. You know, this plastic is all faded, and yet this is pristine black after years of use. Let me tell you how I acquired the Husqvarna. 128 LD. I was looking at Facebook market page and they were listing near my house a garage sale, yard sale, and it said all types, all kinds, high-end trimmers, chainsaw, weed eaters, uh, cheap, cheap, cheap. And I thought, crap, are you kidding me? And the reason I said that is because whenever I can pick up a piece of steel at a garage sale, th that, that is a rarity. Will I show up, and I'm not kidding you, there must be 35 of these in a row in the grass. Echoes, Husqvarna's, and I'm, I'm looking around, it looks like, okay, if you like Husqvarna and Echo, it looked like a candy store. I mean, every, all the brands going up and down, and they all ranged in different prices. And I go, partner, where did you get all these? He says, well, I, I'm a mechanic, you know what I'm saying? And I tinker with engines and stuff. And I says, yeah, but where did you get them? You know what I'm saying? Because guess what he sold this to me for? 20 bucks. Uh, uh, what? $20. And, I, and he started it up and, and it ran. And they sell these units to the guy I bought it from for five bucks a piece. And so what he does is he takes 20 of them 
and he takes the parts off this one and he puts them on this one. And he takes this gearhead and this, and this shaft and this and this and or this. My friend can buy them and take them home. You have to stamp an R in this unit for reject, refurbish, before my guy can take them and fix them. And so what he does is he buys them for five bucks takes the parts off of this one, takes the parts off of this one, and I ask, well, what normally is wrong with them? He says, the gearheads, they seize up like there's no tomorrow. It's garbage from China. The carbs are good for one or two seasons, and then you can just buy one from Amazon for $15 to $20. The shaft, oftentimes they snap within the shaft, the, the rod, which isn't really a strong rod, it snaps, and he just starts going over all the problems. He says the anti-vibration system, oh my goodness, it just breaks here, and then I just have to salvage the engine. I can't fix it, I don't even want to fool with it. And so look, I'm looking at a lawn that's just nothing but Echo, nothing but Husqvarna. And I asked this question, do you have any by, by chance stills? Do, do you have any stills at all? And he goes, oh no, we never get those. They never break down. And so this was running. Listen, listen, listen. This was actually running for about 15 minutes. Okay, and so I'm in the yard and I'm, I'm thinking, you know what, for 20 bucks, this ain't too bad, right? And what do you think happens? The gearhead seizes on me. The gearhead. So now I have, I have the engine that's working, but it wasn't. Listen, listen, listen. I want to shoot straight. While the gearhead was working, it was not a strong weed eater. There was nothing behind it. There was no power behind it. I mean, about grass that's been left a week and a half, and I just need to kind of go around a fence line, go around trees and stuff. It just couldn't handle it. I mean, literally couldn't handle Friends, it. Friends, do you realize I have nightmares? I have a nightmare that someone says, Matt, I need you to clear a lot, and this is what they hand me. A Husqvarna 128 LD. And I have to take something like this down. You know what? I, I think, honestly, a guy that owned one of these, he would know right up front, because he can barely go around mom's tulips, he would probably piss his pants, because this is garbage. This is marketing. This is copycat technology. Even the orange. The only thing this trimmer has in common is a slight shade different of the orange that what? Still uses. It really is garbage. It's not worth anything. I lost $20, but maybe you could save some money and spend $70 more and get the steel product. When someone's giving you a four-year warranty versus a two-year warranty, there is such a reason. I mean, are you kidding me? The braking horsepower, that's the horsepower that the engine produces before it goes down the shaft still wins. Uh, what about the horsepower? Still wins. What about the anti-vibration system? Still wins. What about the tap and go trimmer head? Still wins. What about the handle? Still wins. What about the filter? Still wins. What about the muffler technology? Still wins. What about the valves? What about the valves? Because the guy was telling me he's always having to do all kinds of crap to this and the head, and more times than not, it's burned up. It's literally burned up. Why? It's garbage from China. It's, it's nothing. It really is nothing. And that's why you can can buy these units because they want you to buy them. You know what this is likened unto? This is likened unto toilet paper. You use it once and you throw it away, but this is just sometimes only good for two seasons and then it just starts falling so apart. Let's start with the Husqvarna 128 LD. Let's do a field test. Let's see how she holds up. Hey guys, get used to this get used to this and here's the thing back in the 70s this was real popular because the disco was in this is it look if you can get this number down you know what i'm saying you got it okay let's pretend it started okay get a close-up get a close-up try What a powerful piece of machinery that was. It made it like two minutes without even starting. Oh my goodness. Oh, it earned its one point. Let's go to the steel. Guys, let's start up the steel FS91R. See what it can do. Let's see how many times I gotta crank it. Oh, one time. Oh, that's because it's a steel. All right, let's do this. No, 
I think the other one might be more powerful. Just a second, keep on filming, Tracy. Just a second, just a second. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, look at this, look at this big weed. Oh my goodness. Oh, Husqvarna, it's doing it, man. Yeah, baby. All right, let's go back to the steel. Maybe, I, I, I can't, I, I don't know which way to go with this. I just don't know. I just don't know which way to go. I mean, the torque is probably a thousand times more than the Husqvarna, and yet, I like the way that Husqvarna sounds, don't you? You know what that could be? That could be you driving back to Lowe's to return it, and you're grinding your teeth. What a piece of crap did I buy? One time in the yard and it breaks. And that's normally what takes place. They're gonna break, they're gonna break within the first five times that you use them, and then about a year and a half down the road. I'm not kidding you. Friends, stick with the steel. You can never be wrong, you can never lose. They have a warranty that backs and a tradition for excellence that's been around for 40 years. Hey, this is Matt from Discovering His Way.